What's up, my troll fam? If you're new here, my name is Dion. I call this the crazy troll nation of YouTube. The crazy, just enjoying yourself, knowing it's okay to be your authentic self in videos and in your day-to-day -day life. The troll part is not caring too much about the beauty community standards. You set the standard for yourself. Try not to feel like you need to use a certain brand, a certain tool, or even a certain technique. Do whatever you want to, however you want to, with whatever you want to, to get your makeup on in a way that you are satisfied with it. Because here, at the Crazy Troll Nation, we stand for self-acceptance and self-love. Embracing your natural features, enhancing them if you want to, when you want to, but never feeling like you have to. Love yourself for who you are and for how you look, even without face paint on. I need to let you know I do curse sometimes in videos because I curse sometimes in real life. And um, yeah, I, I do need to let you know. Sometimes my throat gurgles, hiccups, and belches. I don't know what's living in there, <laughs> but it just does its own thing. And I do always say, excuse me. So I'm excited for today's video because the one, the only, Janessa, the champagne queen, has asked me to, to collab with her. And this is what I never told her. I have wanted to collab with her because she's just fucking amazing. Um, she does drag makeup. She does theatrical makeup. Very bold, very bright. Her videos, she's very entertaining. I don't even remember how we came across each other's channels. But I was like, she is just a breath of fresh air. She is different. She's out the box. She's going to just do what she wants to. And her makeup is bomb. And, and her personality, like, she's going to tell you what she thinks. Like, she's not going to hold back. Like, there's times I'll hold back when I'll be like, she don't do that. She's just going to say it. <laughs> and I find her informative and entertaining at the same time. And when I thought, you know, I would like to collab with Janessa, but then I was thinking like, well, what would we do? Because I don't want to do a makeup look because her makeup will knock me out the box. And I'm just like, I'm... Mm -hmm. And so I just had it like in the back of my mind, like, you know, one day, you know, something will pop up. Well, she messaged me and we're doing this collab and I am so excited. We have 12 questions. I only came up with four. <laughs> I only came, and at first I didn't have any, and then as I thought about it, and I was reading through the questions that she sent, you know, I can't, you know, a few came to mind. So, so yeah, so Janessa gets all the credit for this collab. And what I appreciate is that she had called it the self-love makeup tag. And y'all know that's what the Troll Nation is, is for, and what we stand for, self-acceptance and self-love. So I was just like, Ooh. and she's an official troll ken she has joined my channel so she is a part of the membership so that's exciting too and so the tag is the self-love makeup tag because makeup isn't necessary but it is creative empowering and joyful and that's that's what her channel is creative empowering and joyful and so i was all for it and i'm looking at the questions they are unique questions and there's like a header to each question. I have never seen this in a tag video. Like there's just, this is the name of the tag and these are the questions, but there's like a header for each question. That's very unique to me. Like I haven't seen a tag like this before and I'm just like, okay. So let's get, in, let's get into it. I will put the questions, will they fit in a pinned comment? There's 12 questions. Did I say 20 before? I don't even know what I said. I'm just so excited. Um, I will put them in the description box. So the first question, what foundation keeps you grounded? Your most dependable BFF ride or die foundation. I don't have another one open yet because I'm finishing up my current foundations and I'm almost finished the last one. There's three that I rotate through. Oh, you know what? I already have one over here, but then why'd I put this one over here? Because I love this foundation. Um, I rotate through three and I'm a little bit, I have this much left of the third one, just this tiny bit. And then I'm going to open maybe all three again, but my ride or die foundation, my most dependable, but well, the other ones are dependable too. Yeah. I love all the three I use, 
um, Pat McGrath very sheer foundation I do like and I'm wearing it today it doesn't give me a lot of coverage but then if my skin is doing its thing I don't need a lot of coverage like it doesn't cover this I don't have on any concealer I don't mind some of my under eye discoloration shining through because I have under eye discoloration and I put shadow under you know lower lash line and stuff so it kind of camouflages in a way so but this is the pat the Estee Lauder is full coverage so pat is very sheer Estee Lauder is full coverage, but it feels lightweight. That one I also do usually wear concealer with. But what I'm going to choose, the third foundation I use, is the Fenty Beauty Soft Matte Foundation. Because this, I very seldom, even when I don't sleep well, which is seldom too, I seldom use concealer with this. Like, this just works. And it's the perfect shade. All three of the foundations that I use are my perfect shade. This, when I first put it on, though, it looks like the hair light, but then it oxidizes and it's perfect. Whereas the other two, they're just, you know, you put them on and it's just, it, it just works. Um, so, but for this one, so this is going to be my ride or die. Because if I take this somewhere, I don't feel like, oh, let me take the concealer too, just in case I, I want to put concealer on. So this is my ride or die. And... It self sets and so does the Estee Lauder. The pat does not dry down at all for me. So I do have to powder that down. But when I put on the primer and the foundation, the Fenty one, by the time I do, you know, my eye makeup, if I wait to do, you know, powder down and blush and everything, this is already dry. So this, I can just put this on, you know, go eat breakfast or whatever, come back. Everything is dry and is ready for me to go. I don't have to set this if I don't want to. Um, and it doesn't interfere with, um, you know, putting on bronzers and blushes. Like, this is this is my go-to as my ride or die. And it's shade 335, which is perfect for me because they matched me to 310. It was too pink. They matched me to 330. And they all oxidized on me. So, the 330 got more and more red. And so, I was just like, ugh. And I like the finish of it. But I'm like, okay, there's not a shade for me, which was weird because they have 40 shades. And that's just to say, no matter how many shades there there are, <laughs> it's not going to match everybody. And so they came out with more shades, 335. And I'm like, I'll try it, y'all. Perfect for me. And in the pad, I wear M18. Estee Lauder, I wear 4 in 2. So that's my Ride or Die foundation. Number two, what is your favorite lip statement? And what is it saying? And what is your favorite inspirational quote? My lip statement is bold and we're going to rock it because we can. My favorite lip is a black lip. Black History Month gave me a reason, not that I needed one. Every look I did for Black History Month, I wore a black lip. And it rocked every look that I wore it with. And even people were like, a black lip is your neutral lip, Dion. They were like, you rock it. And... It is a it is a a, a powerful color. It, it is a color that intimidates people. Um, some people do, you know, daytime lip looks, and I'm like, I don't do daytime, nighttime, season. Just wear whatever I want to wear. And but black is my favorite lipstick for me. It just sets off whatever look, whatever look. And no, I don't have one on today. <laughs> my favorite inspirational quote: Don't start none, won't be none. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't start none because th th then it won't be none. And so, you know, I'm I'm chill. I'll sit back, but once something pop off, I'm gonna be like, excuse me. <laughs> so that's my quote. Don't start none. Won't be done. I see your true colors. This is number three. I see your true colors, and this is what I'm saying. How she did headers for each thing. I see your true colors. Is there a specific eye look that brings you joy? I have several vibes that I like. And <clears throat> I used to say, you know, my looks were like goth eyeshadow looks, but then they really weren't. And my eyeshadow looks are more messy grunge, maybe a little goth. Punk, because of the, the eyeliner I do for upper lash line. Um, and I do like smoky and vampy. So those are the different vibes that I like. This one, 
I don't even know what to call this type of look. But I did ask someone who does goth makeup. And I said, what would you say my aesthetic is? Like, is it grunge, goth, vampy, smoky, punk? And they said a, a mix of all the above. So I'm like, you know what? I can see that. So, but if I... If... If I didn't do YouTube... And I'm not saying that to say, like, I'm a review channel or whatever, but I do different looks because I want to keep things interesting. I do want to show you variety. I know everyone isn't going to want to do this. I know everyone isn't going to want to do, you know, a vampy look. I know everyone's not going to want to do a non-ethereal look or everyone's not going to want to not do monochromatic looks. And so I do different looks just to show variety. And when I'm using a palette... I do various types of look with that palette, but where I live is messy grunge. Messy grunge with a hint, hint of punk with a non-traditional liner, meaning like this, non, not a black liner and not a brown liner for upper lash line. So where I live is messy grunge, swamp water looks or smoky vampy looks. That's where I live, but I'll do other stuff and I think they're pretty but that's where I go and visit. <laughs> I don't stay there. And so if I didn't do uh, makeup videos for YouTube, just in my regular day life, it would be messy grunge or swamp water or dark, smoky, or vampy. That's what it would be. And I have asked before, and the response was they do like that I do a variety. So it's kind of something for everyone, almost. Minus the black lip for a whole month. <laughs> And so that's what brings me joy, is when I get that swamp water or that messy grunge. And not the pretty cute grunge, but the messy grunge where it's kind of murky. And it's like, that's kind of cute. <laughs> and that's how people are like, because they, they're, they're processing it. Because it's a look that looks messy, but it's intentional. And so, but once you break it down and, and look at it, it's just like, yeah, that's kind of cute. <laughs> but the first look is like, oh, you yeah. know. Um, I'll use Versace as an example. I think the shirts back in the day was awful. Just like blocks of color. And I'm just like, what the fuck is this? But they were so popular. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's something like that when you first look at it. And you're like, but then the more you look, you're like, yeah, that's a statement right there. So that's what brings me joy is the murky, the swamp water, the messy grunge. And then vampy and smoky, which is not messy grunge. But... That, those are the eye looks that bring me joy. And I did a look recently for an, an IG open collab, and I did a rave look. I, w I don't know if I would live there, but that would be an extended stay because that look was so much fun to create. And I'm like, that look was bomb. <laughs> and it surprised me um, how much I liked it. But it was just so much fun to do. And I did have a lot of joy, you know, doing that look. Number four, has spring sprung? Do you use certain makeup or certain colors according to the season or the time of year? No. <laughs> I wear what I want to wear when I want to wear it. I don't... I'm still learning to understand... And I do think I understand it, but then there's times when my analytical brain is like why um and there were some videos because i tried to do you know my favorite spring palettes or my favorite winter palettes and i struggle with that and when people say oh this is a great fall palette or it'll be like march and they'll say this is a great fall palette i'll be using this you know and when fall comes and i'm like so you're just gonna let that sit unused for six months because it's not the fall season and then everybody's seasons are different you know our our fall here like in delaware is different than fall in arizona and so when people would say, you know, a fall look or a spring look, it's always spring in Arizona. So I'm just like, what, what, huh? And so I didn't understand it. And so what helped me to understand it is to think of it this way. The fall season, what it looks like outside, wherever you are in the world, the colors that you see in nature, those are the colors, eyeshadow or makeup they would wear, and that's what would be a fall look or a spring look. Whatever spring looks like wherever you are, that's the colors they would wear. I know a lot of people wear a lot of pastels, a lot of lighter colors in the spring because 
I don't even see that outside in the spring. I just see like a lot of grass and stuff like that and flowers. So I guess that's it, like different flowers and the colors. And so in that sense, I understand it. Whatever you see outside, that's the colors they wear during that season. But still my mind is like, spring is not the same everywhere. The fall season doesn't look the same everywhere. The winter season doesn't look the same everywhere. So I'm like, and so when I'm when I watch videos and they're saying, you know, this is a fall look, and I'm like, maybe where you are according to outside, but then part of me too is like, why let what it looks like outside dictate what you wear on your face? <laughs> Cause so I don't so even though spring spring is trying to be sprung, it was 71 today, it was 72 yesterday, but then it dropped down to like the high 40s, you know, at night. But I don't wear certain makeup or certain colors according to the time or season. It's just like, wear what you want to wear. Like, why just have a palette sitting there unused for five months because whatever the season is outside? I'm like, just use your stuff. Number five, know your power. What's a look or a product that you like to do to feel, to feel let me start that sentence over. What's a look or a product that you like to do to feel extra fierce or bold? A black friggin' lipstick. Hashtag, it's a friggin' black lipstick. That's a hashtag they use on Instagram. And I've been using it since I first seen it, like over a year ago. And I think the channel was, the Instagram channel, I think was Art of War or Miss Art of War or something like that. And then I also saw another hashtag that was just hashtag statement lip. And so I've been using those hashtags when I do a black lip and bold lip colors. But what makes me feel extra fierce and extra bold is when I do a black lip because most people are like, I could never do that. Yes, you can. And then some videos I say, okay, if, because I get it. If you're very fair, you're, you're probably not going to want to do a black lip. And so some, a few videos I've said, you know, do a dark brown or like a deep taupe, or just something darker than just a nude lip, whatever nude is according to your complexion. And so I do feel bold, I do feel extra fierce when I put on a black lip, cause it's like, yeah, what? And I know I rock it, so it's like, excuse me? Don't be hating, cause you don't feel like you can wear a black lip or that you can rock it, because you can, just put it on. Black goes with everything. Like seriously it does. So, I just love a black lip because it's like, yes, I'm here and I'm rocking it and I know I look fantastic in it. So for me, it's a black lip. And when I do a vampy eye look and do a black lip, man, you can't tell me nothing. I mean, you can tell me anything, but I ain't going to hear you because I'm admiring what I look like. <laughs> so you can say whatever. I, I, all I'm gonna hear is wah, 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 wah. In the meantime, I'm just like. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah, that, that's serious. Number six, trolls do what we want. That's the, that's the motto. That's the intro. Number six, trolls do what we want. What is a popular trend, trick, or hack you don't do? Y'all have heard this if you've been here. Metallics, shimmers, y'all, if you've been here, you already know where I'm going with this. You must use glitter glue. Okay, look, you don't have to do nothing. <laughs> if it works for you, great. But when people say, oh, you have to, who, who, I'm not a child and you're not my parent to tell me what I have to do. You're, you're not. Aside from the fact that my lids, and I did try it because I kept hearing, you have to use glitter glue, you have to use glitter glue, you have to use glitter glue, you have to use glitter glue. I'm like, and this was newer in my makeup journey, so I'm really believing what I'm hearing on YouTube. Don't believe everything you hear on YouTube. Try it, though. See if it works for you. If it does, great. My lids were like, bitch, take this shit off, or we will burn your eyelid skin off. And aside from that, though, I was feeling like, what's wrong with me that I can't use it? But then you know what I found out? For me, the Fenty Primer, and it's not tacky for everybody. As I said, everything doesn't work for everybody the same way. The Fenty Primer for me is a tacky primer. And you see me do tutorials. I put the Fenty Primer on. I blend it out. I take um, a brush like this one, a short, stubby um, eyeliner brush, and I just be like, pat, 
in the shadows like pow don't tell me i gotta use glitter glue and honestly even if i was able to use it i wouldn't because the fendi primer is a tacky primer where people say oh you have to put it on, on a tacky base guess what this is a tacky base for me so it's just like what are you saying and so just be aware that when people say you have to do something that you don't have to but try it though because it might be the best thing for you since air fryers and microwaves and, and water pots and rice cookers and, and sliced bread. I mean, it might be that for you. And I, I hear it a lot in videos. And some people, it's just a go-to. They do their crease shade, their transition shade, and it's just a go-to. They automatically then put on glitter glue and put the shimmers on. But because I put my shimmers first, it just sticks right to the primer. So I don't have a problem with them not sticking. Now, if it falls out, even using glitter primer or you have to use your finger, I still see fallout on their face. And so it doesn't guarantee you're not going to have fallout. For me, sponge tip applicators, you have to use your finger. I'm not using my fingers for makeup. I stopped doing that like 15 years ago because I'm messy and stuff just was everywhere. Um, sponge tip applicators for me mimic a finger application. But I tried it because that I'm hearing, because I'm learning from YouTube. And so I'm trying all the things and I'm like, why is this not working for me? Because everything doesn't work for everybody. So trolls do what we want. Try the popular things, try the, the trends and the hacks and the tricks and all of that. If it works for you, stick with it. If it doesn't, just find your own way. So that's something I don't do. I don't use glitter primer. I don't wet my brush. I don't use my finger. <laughs> and you've seen my looks, like the shadow is there. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, and there's other stuff too where I'm just like, not for me. So find your own way because we, and that's the intro, like also try not to feel like you need to do certain things or use certain things because you don't use whatever you want to. But yeah, try it though because it may really work for you, whatever it is that they're saying. Number seven, the pick me up. Ooh, I always feel like Janessa when I go, ooh, because that's how she's like, ooh. But she, she's more seductive the way she says it. I think it's her tone. I'd be like, oh, and it's like, oh, girl, no. <laughs> but I always think of her in my head when I'm like, oh, <laughs> she cracks me up, y'all. I, I, I really, I really enjoy her channel because it is very different than any other channel I've seen here on YouTube. And that's what excites me about her channel. It's like, I'm not going to see the same thing over and over and over that I've seen in 10 other videos from 10 other people. You know what I mean? Like her channel, in my opinion, is a unique channel. And so I do encourage you to check her out. I will tag her in this video. You can click on that. It'll take you to her channel. When I have her collab video link, I will put that below. So if you just want to go to, excuse me for rubbing my ear, which is so rude. Um, if you click on the video link, it'll take you to that video, which you can still get to her channel from there. But if you enjoy her content, her personality, and her editing, y'all, she be putting up some stuff. I ain't got time for all that. <laughs> Let alone trying to find, like, the little clips and stuff that she inserts. But if you enjoy her content, her personality, like, do subscribe to her channel and leave comments and, you know, engagement and interact and all of that stuff. But where are we? The pick-me-up, number seven. What's a small makeup or skincare activity you do if you're feeling a little down to cheer to, to cheer yourself up? The pick me up. What's a small makeup or skincare activity you do if you're feeling a little down to cheer yourself up? I sit here and click on my phone and talk to y'all and do makeup. There's some days, y'all, my... Uh, I be going through some stuff. Um, you know, I am a disabled veteran, so I deal with that. My primary diagnosis is fibromyalgia, chronic joint pain, migraines, and then other stuff. Degenerative joint disease, you know, just, just stuff. Um, herniated and bulging discs in my back, pinched nerves in my neck. And so I... Me at my 100% is probably somebody else's 70% on their best day, like seriously. And so it's been a part of my life for so long. It's like, it just is what it is and I just deal with it. But there's days when I'm just like, like, I just don't feel like doing anything. And I'll be like, you know what? Let me just do something productive. And then I'm like, you know what? Let me just do a face. And I do plan out palettes to use. I do plan out looks to do. 
And so, but I'll just be like, let me just go look and see what I have, you know, on my calendar or what palette I haven't used. And I'll sit here and I'll do a face and I'll chit chat and talk with you. And it picks me up. Like, it's just, you know, being able to share, you know, how I do my makeup and just talking to you. And I do ask questions in almost every video, um, hoping that someone will, you know, comment back and answer so we can, you know, have some little chit chat down in the comment section. And so I really appreciate those of you who do like actually hear the questions and answer the questions and you know we go back and forth in the in the um in the comment section and have discussions down there and it is a pick me up because it's like okay I'm being productive I'm doing something I love to do which is makeup I love interacting and chatting with you all so that's a pick me up too and then you know when the comments come in that's interaction so that picks me up and so just sitting here and just talking to y'all, like even doing tag videos, just sitting here chit-chatting with you. Because I do feel like I'm just chit-chatting with my homies. And it's it's a good feeling. And so this this is my pick-me-up on just a regular day. And I do videos almost every day. Today, this is my second one. I might do a third after this. But this is my pick-me-up. Just sitting here at my station and just chit-chatting with y'all. Like seriously. Um, number eight hug and cry and learn and grow what's a skill or technique you want to practice try master just for the fun of it okay i don't know if janessa's going to mention this but we were talking about well in the in the comment sections under one of our videos like she was talking about eyeliner and she was like i'm going to master doing wing liner this year and i'm like girl because mine's it's 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 actually straight today these are straight but usually i, I had commented I end up with an accidental swoosh and I figured out why I end up with an accidental swoosh. And it's because when I smile, my, okay, let me, let me show you this first. Like you see this natural hollow right here. And when I smile, you see how there's this indentation right here that goes here. That's how it is the corners of my eyes. Like when I smile, it just goes up. Like how this pops out right here. And so I'll naturally just follow the shape of my eye. And it's because of all the puffiness. And so the puffiness comes down to here. And so I would naturally just do a line and just follow the curve of the puff. And so that was my accidental swoosh. And it took me a long time to figure out why my eyeshadow always got the swoosh. But that's why. And it took me years to like figure, <laughs> to figure that out. Because I was following because you can see it. There's the puff. And so I was coming down like under the puff. And so Smith at the Pack did a video probably a couple years ago. And she said, if you have hooded lids, which I do, she said, start at the corner of your eye and just come straight. And again, my habit was <laughs> doing this. And so I have to remember that and just pay attention and put my elbow on the table usually, or at least brace it against the side of the table and just come straight and then bring it back in. But even bringing it in, sometimes I would do the swoosh because I would kind of curve it coming up. And so then it still was like a hook or like Groucho Marx, you know, mustache handlebars for my eye, my eyeshadow, my eyeliner. And so I had commented, you know, I always do like an accidental swoosh. And so we agreed we're both going <laughs> to master wing liner for this year. But I also want to play around more with graphic liner. And this look, you may not notice it. You'll notice it now that I've said it. Because this eyeliner shade does blend into my skin tone. I ran a line, and you can see it now that I'm saying it right here under my brow because I did go out after I did the look so I'm like this will be safe because it kind of blends in and I did the same thing here so this eyeliner color is right under here but I want to play around more with graphic liner like actually on my lid it's just tricky for me because I don't know where to put it because I have the puff and I see looks where they run a line up here and sometimes I think um the rave look I got them almost even like the line I did, because one time this line was kind of curved, this one came out straight or was like angled. So it's just challenging for me. And then sometimes I'll put a line here. My favorite one, because I made it asymmetrical on purpose, I did a line here 
and a line over here. And on this side, I just ran a line here. So to intentionally not making them look the same, which actually look better, because it's like, oh, wow, that's interesting without trying to make it even. Because then if it's not, it, it, it's noticeable that, okay, that don't look right. But if you purposely do it different, then it's like, oh, that's really nice. And so I do want to do more with graphic liner. I also, was this supposed to be one thing? <laughs> Negative space. Doing eyeshadow looks with ne negative space where you do an eyeshadow look, but there's part of your eyelid that doesn't have any shadow on it. That's what I want to do as well. And I see a lot of graphic looks where it might be an eyeliner look and it's, it'll be like a curve and there'll be something here, but the middle is blank. But I'm not good at doing symmetrical makeup. And so that's what stops me a lot of times. It's like, I know this ain't going to look like that. But the main thing, I want to at least, you know, have my wings straight on a consistent basis and I do want to play around more and get good at graphic liner, but I need to do it more. And I'm just apprehensive about it. And that's really what it is. I don't want to say scared because it's just makeup. You wash it off. But I'm just like, and there's times when I'll say I'll do eyeliner and come back and I'll do the liner or upper lash line. And then I'm like, like pretending to put it places like without touching my lid because I'll be thinking, well, what if I did this? And then I'll be like, you know what? No. And then I'll just put mascara on and come back and be like, this is the finished look. But... <laughs> So there are times I think about it and I know I need to just do it. And it is something that um, my official troll, Ken, those, that was one of the things to do um, different is just to experiment with different techniques and different things. So definitely eyeliner wings, graphic liner overall, and negative space. Those are the three things that I want to practice I don't know if I'll master them all, but definitely practice. Number nine, YouTube University. Why did you first start watching YouTube videos, even if not makeup related? And if not makeup related, how did you get here to the makeup stuffs? I first started watching YouTube videos I want to say around 2004, because the dude I was dating at the time, which ended up being, you know, second ex-husband, <laughs> he would watch YouTube for like music. Oh, you know what it was? Because he, he would sing at church. And sometimes they would ask him to do, you know, just to do a song. Like he wasn't a part of the choir, but they would ask him to sing. Yeah, he has a really... <sighs> His voice was good, but I don't know. I, did, I never knew what his singing voice was because he would sing a song that someone else did and he would sound like the person that sang that song. And so I never knew what his singing voice was because he was always imitating other people. But what he did do, it did sound really good. And so when they would ask him to sing a song, like, oh, can you sing this song, you know, two Sundays from now? He would go on YouTube and look up the videos for that song and then he would practice. And... I started wanting to wear makeup. I was 35, y'all. I was so late blooming. I really was. And he said, you know they have everything on YouTube. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, there's makeup stuff on YouTube. I'm like, really? So that's how I... Because <laughs> I was like, I didn't even know... I don't even know when YouTube became a thing. Like, seriously, I, I know it's been around for a long time, but I know it hasn't been around forever since the internet. But I was like, oh, so I started watching YouTube and U YouTube University and quite a few content creators call it that because we learned how to do makeup from YouTube. I've learned what worked for me. I learned a hell of a lot of stuff that doesn't work for me. But that's how I got here, watching YouTube videos to learn how to do makeup. And I do watch some cooking shows, even though it's just me and my air fryer. We we, we get down and get jiggy with it. Um, and also music videos, hip hop uh, music videos I watch. And my cousin in North Carolina... <laughs> I talked about him in a video before. He'll send me links to videos, and so I do watch those, and I have a private playlist. Every time he sends me a video, um, I listen to it, and then I put it into a playlist that has his name on it. And so, you know, and so I do I do, do that. And so I listen to the stuff he sends, which isn't hip-hop, it's other stuff, but it's always something that's kind of thought-provoking or is really interesting or just the sound is just like, Wow. Um, but me on my own, it would just be like hip hop, <laughs> old school hip hop, preferably. So I, I came on here for the makeup, um, but I do watch some cooking videos. Um, and there's a channel, I think they changed the name. It used to be Rosa and Anzai. Um, I will link that channel below. 
um, she's from Uganda and um, a store owner or somebody from China she became friends with. And when that person went back home to China, um, she asked her brother, would you be interested in meeting someone from another country? And so Rosa went there and, you know, all this time later, you know, they're married right now. Well, I don't know right now because I don't know if they upload things linear. Um, but she's pregnant as of now in the videos we see with their second child. And so I'll link that video be below. It's very interesting. Um, and so I watched, I watched those videos and I have to read the captions because she speaks in, in Chinese. And so she speaks her native language and she speaks English and she speaks Chinese. And so I think they call it Mandarin. Um, so I find her, that channel very interesting. And I think it's because it's a rural lifestyle. I'm from the city. I'm from the streets. <laughs> I'm from the hood. And so just to see how different it is. And to see the sense of community that they all have being, you know, a rural area and like almost everybody's related. If they're not, their grandpa, grandma, auntie, uncle, if it's a store owner, boss lady, boss man. So it's like, it's, it's, it's like a family. The whole community is just like a family. And I really like that because when I, me, where I grew up, it wasn't like that at all. It was like, you got to fend for yourself. And if there's man down, you just step over and keep on going because you don't want to get caught up in whatever's happening. <laughs> But, um, so yeah, I, I came here for the makeup and then I started, you know, seeing the hip hop videos and that and, um, some of the travel videos, particularly that one. I don't watch a lot of them, but they're, they're interesting. Number 10. Oh, also going back to YouTube university. I know that gaming is huge on YouTube and also podcast channels are huge on here, but. I'm not here for those, but so if you didn't, if you, if you came here, not for makeup, how did you get here to the makeup part of YouTube? Um, but why did you first start watching YouTube? So number 10, time is a commodity. Do you prefer shorter videos? Like, you know, 15, 25 minutes, or do you like longer videos and why y'all seen the length of my videos? Y'all know I like the long form. <laughs> I like to chit chat with you when I'm doing makeup and maybe it's because of how I learned how to do makeup. When someone just, you know, they cut out a lot, you know, they put a color here, they come back and the whole thing's done. I'm like, how did you do that? And so it was a struggle for me when I was learning how to do makeup because it was so much cut out. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. or I'm putting it on. I'm like, well, mine's don't look like that. Sometimes it might take me five, maybe three minutes, which, hmm, two minutes I'll say, which is long when you're trying to blend out a shadow. That's eternity blending out a shadow. So sometimes I'll cut it out the video. But if I'm just doing just one look, that video might be 30 minutes because I'm doing the whole entire process. And for me, that was important when I was learning to do makeup. Um, and I do understand once you get into your groove and you know how you like your makeup, some people have said, I just want to see the look. And if I want to create it, I'll try and recreate it. They don't necessarily want to see the process. And that's why I do timestamps. If you want to skip, you can skip, even though I would hope that you would stay. But I know some people just want to see the look. They don't want to see the process. But then I've received a lot of feedback where they're like, I like seeing the process. I like seeing the transformation. And I've had some people say, which is where I was. And sometimes still am. They say, I'm glad you left all the blending in because they were like, I felt like you can just put it on and it's okay. And I was wondering why my eyeshadow never came out right because they didn't realize sometimes you got to blend and then go back to the previous shadow, take that brush, do some more, fix this, finagle that, put this and do that. And so that's why I do like the longer form, the tutorial type videos, even though my way isn't going to work for everybody. It is a process <laughs> and it's not just put this here and then you're done. You know what I mean? And so... That's why I like longer videos. Um, and also when they're explaining or they're just talking because I'm interested also not just the look and the transformation, but also on what they're saying. And so that's why I talk a lot in my videos too because I'm talking to my homies. How y'all doing? What's up? Peace. And so do you prefer, and I think TikTok messed everything up too because people want stuff that's like less than a minute. What can you learn in less than a minute? Because I can say, oh, this is great, blah, blah, blah. But then I keep using that product and three days later, my face broke out. Y'all don't know that because I only did, you know, a 30 second clip, you know, days ago. And so, but I like, I like the reviews, the ones that explain why they don't like it or why they do versus, oh, this is great. 
why? Like, why is that great for you? You know what I mean? So I like longer form because for me it's more informational and it can be more educational um, across the board, whether it's makeup tutorials or reviews or um, whatever. So number 11, unity through community. <laughs> I'm tired. Unity through community. I love how she did these headings. Number 11, unity through community. What are your top favorite channels to watch for upbeat or inspiring beauty content? I didn't think about this one. Um, so this is going to be off the top of my head. Wow. Um, and I did read the question earlier and then when I printed them out, like I didn't go back to it. Uh, my five top favorite channels to watch for upbeat or inspiring beauty content. I already talked about Janessa. <laughs> She's entertaining and she's informational and she also does, she also loves horror. So she did a video on Scream 6, the movie, which I haven't seen. And so I was like, <laughs> you know, I was really listening like, what, what happened in the movie? And listening to, you know, her review of it. And it was very interesting. Um, so she does makeup and she does um, movie reviews, horror stuff. And she's just entertaining. And I, 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 I enjoy her just being herself because a lot of people it seems like they're trying to be who they think their viewers want them to be i'm holding one finger because i forget what number i'm on <laughs> for the five favorite channels and so i it's just refreshing someone just doing their thing and i do encourage people if you want to do videos just do your thing your people will find you and like i said earlier i don't remember how we found each other's videos but you know we're here i don't know if it was recommendations or a tag like i really don't know um, but you know, we're here now. So she's definitely one because her channel's different. Another one off the top of my head, Melissa, and I do believe she changed her channel name. It used to be Aspie Girl Melissa. She has Asperger's. She does makeup more bold than me. Uh, oof. And I'm just like, get it, girl. <laughs> So it's like, just do your thing, boo-boo. You know what I'm saying? And it's refreshing because sometimes it. I look at 10 videos and they all just look the same. And I'm just like, didn't I watch this? And I'm like, oh, no, that was so-and-so. It's so, like, give me something different. Show me something new. And she does really bold makeup. And she's young. I'm 54. She's probably half my age. And she's just like, just do you. Be yourself. Who cares what anybody say? And I'm like, get it, girl. Because it took me to be in my 40s to stop giving a shit about what people think of me. And so her being like half my age and already having that attitude, that mentality, I'm like, get it, girl. Like, I wish in my 20s I was like, fuck all y'all and just did my own thing. But, um, and so I, I appreciate her channel because she's not ashamed or afraid to be herself. And so if you like really bold makeup, check out her channel. Um, I'll, I, I think I talked about, I did, I talked about her in another video and I did link her below. Um, so I'll link her below. Janessa's already going to be linked below. I'm going to say Lock Maiden. Oh my gosh. Y'all hear how loud and obnoxious I am? She is the opposite. <laughs> She, she, and I don't think I've ever told her this. She helps me feel grounded because she's soft-spoken. She's thoughtful with what she says. She starts her videos, hello, welcome. In today's video, and I'm like, chapstick. <laughs> but she's very soothing, very calming. Her makeup looks are amazing. She's good at explaining why something works for her, why something doesn't, why she's doing this this way instead of that way. And also, I call her, and I haven't called her Quiet Storm in a while. I call her Quiet Storm because she's so her demeanor is so calming and so soothing. And her makeup looks are just really nice. Every once in a while, she'll do like an avant-garde look. And it's just like, how does meek little creature do this? Like, what? what and there's some looks that she's done where like it included face paint and i love watching her create those looks because you know she'll put on her eyeshadow and then she'll have a brush and she'll like you know look back and then she'll come up and do something else and then she'll look and then she'll put something else here and then she'll look and i'm just like wow and so i call it a quiet storm because to see the look be so 
graphic and not like in a bad way but graphic to where if she's doing a look based on a picture of tree bark <laughs> you will see the texture in how she does her makeup and the makeup isn't textured but just the the skill that she has and the techniques that she used like you can see exactly what she's portraying and i'm like how this little neat little quiet person do this this, this thing. And so I call it quiet storm for that reason. Um, because some storms are loud, but then there's like a, a quiet element to it where it's also soothing at the same time. And back in the day, there was a segment on late night radio called quiet storm. And so they would play like, you know, soft music or like the baby making music as they would say. And then every now and then you would hear like cracks of thunder in the back. And so it was called quiet storm. So you have the quiet, but then you have like bursts of loudness. And so that, that to me is Lock Maiden. She's quiet and she has like a, a calming demeanor. But every now and then there's just like a pop, like boom. And it's just like, whoa. You know what I mean? So, and her channel is definitely different too than a lot of channels I see on YouTube. And so she would definitely be in that top five. I'm going to say... <laughs> My late night, early morning chat bestie, Joe Beauty 87 aka Grace. We chit chat almost every day. I'm on Instagram and we've done quite a few collabs and I'm sure we have some more coming. Actually, we do have one coming. I don't know if it's before or after this video, but her, <laughs> I love her content, y'all. She, and she does like bold makeup looks too. And she's brown skin. I'm like, where are my brown people at? that's relationable that you can relate to that are personable and that's that are not or doesn't seem to try to emulate other people and so for me like i find her to be an authentic person she does um non-traditional eyeliner too non-traditional meaning not black or not brown she does bold looks like this one she does looks different than this one but all of her looks are like really colorful really bold she does always do a new lip though i'm like girl put on a black <laughs> But I really enjoy her looks and her personality. And what I appreciate about her channel is she ha she's always coming up with ideas. She probably has like seven series running right now. But one of them is why you don't need this. And so she'll have a new palette and then she'll show you 10 other ones that's similar to the new one and be like, you don't need this because, and she'll show you a lot of comparisons. And sometimes it is a price difference, sometimes it's not, or and it's always usually a brand difference. And she has a series of brands that dupe themselves. So you don't need this one from this brand because you already got this one from that brand. If you just look at the colors in a different um, organizational way, and so I appreciate her channel for that because a lot of the new, new, the new release, the new release, what about the other stuff that been out that we probably already have? Well, that y'all probably already have because my collection is fairly small, but she's a good channel for that. And it's inspiring for me to like see her do her looks because this is her doing her own thing and not just doing the same old, same old stuff that it seems like a lot of YouTubers do in the beauty space here. And so who's my fifth person? Damn. So those were the four off the top of my head. Janessa, Melissa, Lockmade, and Grace. Who else is on the top of my head? I used to love watching Lynette's videos because she had a series called I'm Not Buying It. And so she would show new releases like in a picture over here somewhere and she would talk about why she's not buying it. And so I really appreciated that. She hasn't done videos in a while and I wanted her to come back. Um, who else? Wow. Um... Damn, Janessa, this is hard. <laughs> and I don't want to leave it and come back to it because I might forget to come back to it. Who's my fifth person? I'm going to say, and probably because I just watched her video. <laughs> but I'm really excited for her, though. Like, seriously. Who else? I'm going to say Jasmine, the buffet witch. Um, Instagram, she does amazing looks. She does bomb ass looks. And she's brown skinned too. I'm like, girl, we need you on YouTube. We need some brown skin representation of people who are doing bold looks and not just the everyday monochromatic ethereal type stuff. And I've been I was encouraging her for a long time. Like, we need you on YouTube, blah, blah. And she started a YouTube channel. And I'm like, girl, get it. And the <laughs> on her Instagram. Like her commentary cracks me the hell up. And you know, she's the same way on her videos. And I'm just like, the way she says stuff, 
you know, she was saying something about, you know, exfoliating her lips. She's like, yeah, you got to get the cornflakes off. Like, she just says shit. It's just like, where did that even come from? It's just hilarious, though. And, but her content is good. And right now, she's doing, well, as of today, um, she's doing a series of um, lip swatches on different lipsticks. I've never seen a lipstick color she can't rock. I'm like, how do you rock every friggin' lipstick color ever made? Like, how? But she does. Um, but her makeup looks are bold, um, and, you know, they're colorful. And what I like, too, on her Instagram is she would do, like, one eye look. But then she would do a collage of different lip colors with that same eye look. I'm like, who does that? She do. And so that was really nice, too, because we don't realize a lipstick color can change what your makeup looks like. So even though it's the same eye look... You know, she's showing you five different look, lipsticks with that same eyeshadow look. And it was just like, wow. And so I'm really excited that she's here on YouTube. I will link her below. Do check her out. She is freaking hilarious. She, <laughs> she is hilarious. And so Janessa, Melissa, Lock Maiden, Joe Beauty 87, and Jasmine, the Buffet Witch. Those channels, I just enjoy them because they're different. And each one... Is distinct from the other ones that I named and and they're all distinctly different than other stuff I've seen here on YouTube the content and also their personalities um, and their humor because <laughs> sometimes Locke has a humor I mean I know everybody does but she's subtle with it she <laughs> like Janessa you gonna know she being funny Jasmine she just say stuff and I think that's just how she is because it just flows and I'm just like like I couldn't even think that type of stuff and it just like pfft. And I'm just like, girls, I'll be cracking up watching her videos. Um, but every now and then, Locke will say something. I'll be like, did she just... And then I'll start laughing because I wouldn't think that she would, you know, say whatever it is she said or, you know, how she said it. Um, but yeah, she... <laughs> yeah, so I really enjoy those five channels. And I'm still laughing because I'm just thinking of Locke's videos um, in my mind. And so the five of you that I mentioned, like, thank you if you see this. Thank you for what you do and thank you for staying true to yourself and, and just rocking who you are. The 12th one, y'all like, finally, girl, I didn't think this video was going to be this long. Um, number 12, what is your favorite thing about yourself that has nothing to do with makeup? What is the favorite thing about myself that has nothing to do with makeup? My favorite thing about myself was when I learned it's okay to be me and to not care so much about what other people think and to not care about living according to someone else's expectations. Just be myself and knowing that it was enough. And if the people I was around didn't appreciate that or didn't accept it, then I need not be around those people. It was very freeing for me when I learned just be who I am, period. And you know what? My people found me. And so if you're apprehensive about, well, I don't know if I should say this or, you know, maybe I should not do that. And you're finding that you're miserable in your day-to-day -day life. It might be because you're not being who you are. And when we constantly try to be what we think other people want us to be, we're never coming into our own. And then there's always this feeling of, am I enough? Or would I be enough? Would they still like me? If they don't still like you and you're being you, then that's not the person you should be around. And I see it a lot of times. And I do have a clinical background. And even some clients, they're like, well, I'm afraid if he found out such and such, or if she found out, tell them. And if they don't accept it, that's not your person. Because if somebody's going to be with you and say they love you and care about you, it shouldn't matter. Especially if it's your history. I mean, if it's something like, you know, you, you, you're on the... the you know, the registry for doing stuff you shouldn't have did to children. I mean, that, that's that's different. I'm not talking about stuff like that. But just, just like just regular everyday stuff. Like me, I didn't get my driver's license until I was like 22. Like, who cares? <laughs> well, who cares that, you know, I used to drink alcohol or that I tried weed? It's like, well, what if he found out when I was in high school, I was a pothead? Well, you were in high school and you're not anymore and you don't smoke weed anymore. So what's the big deal? So just like just be like fuck it be yourself and so and I know those probably were not good examples but I've heard some things and I'm just like but how long ago was that and it was the learning lesson some things are just learning lessons like you learn to just 
appreciate life. You learn to just be like, this is what it is and this is what it's not and just roll with whatever comes and not being ashamed of why well, I wish that never happened. It's a learning experience. Learn from it, grow from it and keep moving forward. And it was so freeing for me when I learned it's okay to just be who I am. And that's my favorite thing about myself is I just own who I am. And when people don't dig it, see you and know that it's okay. I'm not for everybody. I say it in my videos. The same as I say, I know my makeup looks aren't for everybody. My personality isn't for everybody. And that's okay. Everybody's not meant to like everybody. Like, y'all, yeah, I can love you and still not like you. Think about that. I can love you and not like you. Those are two different things. And so that's my favorite thing about myself is when I learned it's okay to just be me. And it's just very freeing to just be yourself. And when your people find you or you find your people and you click good, bad, or indifferent, they care about you and they love you, it's just like, wow. And it's not even a thing of, oh, I wish I would have, you know, found myself, you know, 20 years ago. But, you know, when you do, it's, it's just amazing and it's very freeing. And yes, yeah, so I'm going to end here. Um, <laughs> thank you, Janessa, for this collab. Um, and as I said, I only came up with four questions and so we spring she sprinkled them in. Um, but feel free to do this collab. If you do, tag both of us so that we're sure to see it. Um, if you don't want to do the collab or if you don't do videos, you know, feel free. You know, the foundation that keeps you grounded. Um, your favorite lip statement. Number three, um, a, sp a specific eye look that brings you joy. And again, they'll be in the description box. And so if you just want to answer just a couple of the questions in the comment section, please do. If you do videos and you found this interesting or it made you think about things, please do a video. Again, just make sure you tag us so that we can see it. And thank you for being here. And do check out the five channels I talked about. And as always, self-acceptance, self-love, that is the Crazy Troll Nation way. Thank you, and you will see me very soon.